Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. If you're a brand new Linux user, there's all kinds of things that you need to learn, and it could get fairly overwhelming. And the thing is, there's also some things that you'll run into most commonly that might trip you up. So in this video, what I'm going to do is help out all the new Linux users out there by going over five things that new Linux users usually run into, or five things that you should watch out for. And I know just starting out with a brand new platform, especially Linux, can be a bit overwhelming. Well, keep in mind you have this channel to help you out. So if you haven't already subscribed to Learn Linux TV, then you should definitely do so because this is your home for Linux related fun and learning and teaching you guys about Linux is literally what I do. Now with all of that out of the way, let's dive in and go over the five things that I think new users should watch out for, starting with number one. And the first mistake that new Linux users often make, at no fault of theirs, is that often they'll use too old of a kernel version. Now Linux differs from other platforms in that the drivers for hardware are included right in the kernel itself. That's pretty cool, actually, because that means Linux itself has drivers to, well, run just about anything. The problem with this is that if you use too old of a kernel version, then it's not going to know about hardware that came out in the future. So if you have a brand new motherboard, a brand new video card, but an older kernel, then the kernel has no way of knowing that those pieces of hardware exist and obviously won't have drivers for them. So one of the symptoms of this is a piece of hardware might not be operational at all. For example, a network card might not be visible. So it looks like you don't have a network card even when you do. Some weird hardware related shenanigans will happen when you use too old of a kernel version. And the interesting thing about this is that it's not like the new Linux user made a conscious decision about which kernel to have on their Linux distribution. That decision was made by the Linux distribution. So here we have an issue that Linux users might run into, and it's literally of no fault of theirs. They didn't choose the kernel version. They didn't choose the hardware support level. They just chose a distribution. So ultimately, this is a distribution problem. Sometimes Linux distributions will ship with older Linux kernels, thinking that it makes the distribution more stable, which has never been true. And a result of that is the kernel that they offer as part of the distribution is so old, it doesn't work with newer hardware. For example, maybe you install the latest version of Debian, and it's the most current version, but it doesn't support your video card, your motherboard, or something like that, maybe your sound card. And maybe those things would have worked on any other distribution, but they don't work on the one that you've chosen because the kernel is too old. It happens. So if you do have a problem when it comes to hardware support or things not being detected, you could just try to use a different distribution, which will have a different kernel version. And you can look at the kernel version on kernel.org if you're curious what's the most current, and then see if that solves your problem. This is something that I think most new Linux users will run into, so I figured I would add it to the list. Continuing, the second thing that I'd like to bring up is probably obvious if you've been using Linux for a little while, but if you're just starting out, you might not be aware of this, and that is that you should not run as root all the time. The root user is essentially the most important user on a Linux system because root can do anything. For example, if you want to install a package with no password, no problem. If you're running under the root account, you won't be asked for a password, it'll go ahead and do it. The thing is, the root account has more privileges on the system than any other user. So if you accidentally type an RM command, for example, and you don't craft it properly, and you end up removing your entire file system, well, you can do that if you're running as root. You won't even get a password prompt. And the reason why this is such an issue is because an assumption is being made within the Linux community, and especially within distributions, and that assumption is if you're using the root account, you're doing so because you know what you're doing. And that's why the root account doesn't ask any questions. It doesn't get in your way. It doesn't stop you, although there are some exceptions to that with the way that some distributions have been designed. More often than not, root will let you do everything for better or worse. And the worse is potentially an unbootable system. So don't run as root all the time. Instead, use sudo. And again, this is probably common knowledge for many of you, so I don't want to spend too much time on this. In fact, I have an entire video that covers sudo if you want to learn it. But Regardless of what other Linux admins are doing out there, don't run as root all the time. Create a normal user for yourself. That's the best way to do it, and that's the way that you should do it. So create a user for yourself, 
and stop using root unless you absolutely have to. Now the third mistake that new Linux users often make, and this is somewhat surprising to me, is that they'll install a Linux distribution on their computer as the only operating system without testing compatibility first. Now here's the thing, I'm not trying to be judgmental here, but you should never, ever, ever install any operating system unless you verify compatibility first. You definitely don't want to install an operating system, get it installed, and find out that nothing works, and you've already blown out your main operating system on the hard drive, replaced it with Linux, and by doing that, you've basically handicapped yourself because now you can't do certain things because you didn't test compatibility first. Now, what makes this interesting to me is that most distributions offer live mode. What live mode allows you to do is demo a Linux distribution before installing it. So you could test your Wi-Fi card, your video card. For example, you could plug in an external monitor, make sure that works, make sure you can get online, your sound card works. You could check all of that before you install it. If any of those things don't work, you should not install it. Find out why it doesn't work. And when you have a general idea why and what to do about it, then you could proceed with the installation. But do not install Linux without testing compatibility first. Now, by telling you guys there's a demo mode that lets you demo Linux before you install it, you would think that this is a problem that no one has. But still, I find all the time on forums, people posting messages like, I installed Linux and I can't get online now. How do I get online? Or how do I get my Wi-Fi card to work? And I'm wondering, did you not notice demo mode? Did you not notice Wi-Fi wasn't working before you installed Linux? Now, I'm not trying to be judgmental. I just honestly don't understand why that's so common. It's a very common issue. And that's why I always tell you guys to use live mode, test compatibility first, and then install Linux, and you'll have a much better experience. Now it's time for number four. Another mistake that some Linux users make is they'll write off an application or command because it's difficult to learn. For example, they may not give Vim a try because it might be overwhelming to learn, or they might not give the sed command a try, which would otherwise be very useful to them. Sorry to interrupt my own video, but I just wanted to let you know that I appreciate each and every single one of you, and I love creating Linux-related content for you guys. But unfortunately, producing high-quality Linux content like this isn't cheap. But if you want to help me make even more content for you guys, then consider supporting Learn Linux TV. And a great way to do that is to check out the official shop for Learn Linux TV, which was just recently updated. Inside the shop, you'll find distro-themed shirts, bags, drinkware, and more. And there's some other surprises there as well. For example, I've just introduced a mouse pad that doubles as a Tmux cheat sheet. How cool is that? So check out the shop at merch.learnlinux.tv or you can check out the merch shelf right here on YouTube. You could get yourself something really cool and support Linux learning at the same time, so it's a win-win. Anyway, thank you guys so much for your support. I really appreciate it. Now, let's get back to the video. So some commands might get written off just because of their difficulty level. And I think the biggest reason why this is the case is that people assume that they have to learn everything. I mean, if you take a look at all the options for any one Linux command, you might think like, how does anyone remember all of these commands? Well, the thing is, nobody remembers these commands. Instead, people remember the things that they use or the options that they use. They write those down and that's what they use. But they don't learn everything. I don't think very many people have memorized the you know man pages for every command or anything like that. That's just not normal. If somebody looks at a man page for Vim or rsync or any of these other commands that are, you know, more complicated, they might get scared off. There's just a lot to learn. But the thing is, again, you don't have to learn everything. You only need to learn the options that pertain to what you want to do. And that's what you learn. And that makes everything a lot easier. And even I had the same problem. I didn't start using the sed command until much later in my career because I thought it was overwhelming. But when I realized I didn't have to learn everything, I now use sed pretty much weekly and sometimes daily. It's a very useful command, and it's one of the ones that I recommend that you learn. But definitely don't write off a command because it's hard. Just learn the basics, the very, very, very basics, low-level basics, and then I think you'll have a much easier time getting up to speed with that command. Now for mistake number five. And that mistake is focusing on just one distribution. Now, I get it. There's all kinds of Linux distributions out there. I mean, we have Ubuntu, Debian, CentOS. I could go on. There's a bunch of Linux distributions out there. Often, what happens is people within the Linux community will tell you and recommend that you pick a daily driver distribution and you stick to that one. Now, I do agree with that to a point. You should pick a daily driver Linux distribution. 
Absolutely, but don't let that be your only distribution. You should have at least a plan B distribution because maybe the distribution that you use as your daily driver is going to go a direction that you don't want to follow along with, and changes happen all the time. So if you don't want to go along with a distribution's decision, you might be left with a choice. Stick with that distribution or learn another one from scratch. But if you at least know the basics of another distribution and that becomes your plan B distro, then I feel like that situation won't be as difficult to navigate. And if you work at a company, even better, because that way you'll be informed of multiple distributions. You know the basics of multiple distributions. That makes you more marketable. But yes, choose a daily driver, but that does not mean that distribution should be the only one that you use. It could be your main distribution, but always have a backup plan in case something happens. Anyway, in this video, I've gone over five things that new Linux users often run into, and I hope you find this content helpful. The thing is, there's definitely other things that you might run into as a new Linux user, but I wanted to go over five of the most common things that I find in this video, which is exactly what I've done. But if you want to learn even more about Linux, if you haven't already subscribed to Learn Linux TV, then definitely do so, because I upload new Linux content every week. Anyway, with that said, there's our video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.